and here we do a loosening up exercise and a painting of nothing. Well this is certainly something different here. So we've got this great big board. It's 80 centimetres by 60 centimetres. That's about three foot by two foot. And over here I have a few colours. I don't have a lot of colours. We've got white, crimson, Australian sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and a little bit of black. We might use the black, we might not use the black, it doesn't matter. I'll pick up the white first with the tip of the brush. Now put a dot, that's the middle of my board. It's a pretty big board, so we no need to see it all. Let's come away from the middle and just do a crisscross like that. A few crosses, and we'll clean the brush. Let the brush run out of paint. Make sure you get every little bit. Don't leave anything. And clean the brush down here. Then I'll pick up a nice big bit of Indian yellow or Australian sienna, and we'll take that and start brushing on the side here. Oh, it looks great already. Now, this is practice to brush without overbrushing. Don't overdo it, because I really want you to loosen up and paint. Now, we'll clean our brush down here again. My acrylic paint's going all right. It's drying on there. This board is custom wood, and I coated it with PVA glue. Plenty of Indian yellow or Australian sienna. Definite brush strokes. Loosen up and paint. But be careful that you get every bit. Don't have anything missing. This time I picked up a bit of white. I'll put it over that. There we are. That looks good. In there. In there. Now don't fit around with it. Just leave it. It's there. Okay. Yours won't look exactly like mine. That white is too bright. Oh, mine's dried already. That's good. There. If yours is oils, do the same thing. There. Clean my brush here. You see both colours? That's it. And let's bring that into there. So practice picking up both colours at once. We haven't touched the crimson yet. And I know there's a lot of white on my brush. So let's unload it up here. Away from there. We don't want to spoil our good bit. If you want to clean your brush, clean it over here. But keep your strokes going round. Don't have them going across like this all the time or up and down. Keep them going around and then we'll get the idea of the thing coming towards us, whatever it is. I don't know what it is. And there's bits missing there, so I'll brush them over. That's a bit bright. But you don't know every one of these paintings is different. I'll unload a bit more of the grey and see in it. Up the top here. Clean my brush, unload it. Oh, that's a beautiful colour, isn't it? And another lot. That is a pretty colour. And we'll have a little bit more at the top than at the bottom. So we're getting pretty close to the top of the board here. But we're still a fair way from the bottom. So now I'm going to load some crimson. Keep it away from the middle. Bring it in. Crisscross. Clean your brush. Oh, that's a lot up there. That doesn't matter. Up here too. And up here and down here. You do use a lot of paint doing this, so just put it on, put it on, one brush stroke. I'd like to blend the golds together there. It gives a bit of an orangey colour there. Clean my brush down the bottom. Clean my brush over here too. And because that's looking a little bit bland there, I've loaded a little bit of white. Oh, it's a little bit too much. Be careful. We'll do something like this, just to stop it from getting just too much red there. I'll run some white into it. That'll break it a little bit. Here again. You notice I'm using one side of my brush. This is great practice for you to practice and loosen up. Just paint. The main thing is, as I keep saying, make sure you cover all the board. Don't leave any little bits, because if you come back and touch them, they're not going to look like part of the painting. I've loaded plenty of white and Australian sienna again. Let's bring it down like that, like that. Now I think I'd better go into some dark, so we'll pick up some burnt umber. Oh, burnt sienna there, I forgot about that one. Let's bring him in too, all around the edge. Now this is similar to quite a lot of scenes we can do like this, but it's very good for loosening your hand up. Now I've got crimson and burnt umber on the brush at once. Oh, that looks good. Brush, brush. I'll fill the corner in now. Let's see what happens when we put a bit of black in there. I don't usually use black. I prefer to mix it, but the black was in there and I didn't want to waste it, so let's use it. Fill it in every bit. Fill every little bit in. That's it. Don't go over it. Now, this is where you must not fiddle. And down the side. 
and we'll finish off. Oh, now, not that way. No, I don't want that. I want them like that. Whatever colour you got, just put it on. I'm picking them up from down here now because I've run out of paint up there. Oh, a lot of red there. That's okay. We'll see what happens with that. Let's put some burnt sienna on that, and I'll put a bit of white over the top of that in a minute. And a bit of the Australian sienna in there somewhere. And a bit of white, just to colour it. This spot here is a bit bland. Let's have some little brush strokes. Something like that. Nothing in particular. So we'll make it up as we go along. Oh, that's a crisscross brush stroke. That's nice. That's different. Crisscross, crisscross. A bit more paint. Crisscross, crisscross. And the darks up in the corner. Now, make sure we've got all the board covered. And down here. Bend it there a little bit, break it in a bit. Let's see a few brush strokes here and there. And maybe one there. What have we got? Well, there's always a potential. If you do ponder with your painting, cut out some paper cuttings and put in. And place them in place just to see what it would look like with a person in it. Or with your favourite thing in there. You never know what you might end up with. Next I want you to take a, a favourite brush. This is about a one inch brush. It's just a hog bristle brush. Load a bit of white and a bit of dark. So we've got light and dark. It's on the brush at once. Dark on that side, light on that side. And when we're brushing on, make sure you keep your light on the inside of your picture. That side here and that side here. Now it's all good practice. Now we're going to paint some pleasant curves. When you're coming down with your curves, don't let them come over these joins. Any joins you've got like that, let's see them. So we'll try and keep our curves away from them so we can see anything. If there's something particularly you don't like, let's paint a curve over the top of it. Well, I'll start almost at the top. I don't want to go up through the top. It'll take your eye through the top, but I don't want to start on that line there. So let's start like that and just push the brush on. I'm watching not to destroy any good shapes, and like that. How about that? Or you might prefer a little brush. Look at that little tiny brush. It's got white on one side and dark on the other. And do something delicate in here. I just got a thing about trees. I paint trees, but you might have something you want to paint in here, a sailing ship or a person. And if you want to make it look creepy, do this. Zag it, zag. Zigzag. That type of shape. Any colour, as long as the things are facing into the picture. Don't have anything coming from there and facing out of the picture. This is good practice for you for arrangement without the fear of destroying a good painting. So you can throw your paint on. And of course we must be careful not to overdo it. I can see something there, I don't know what it is, but let's, let's do that. That catches the eye and brings it back into here. Now I'll move to the top. I'm not real fussy with my palette, I'm just picking up anything. I think that should go further. And that, two fingers, throw it on. That nearly joined that line. I didn't want that. Anything you don't like, cover it up. There's nothing here that I want to cover. I'll just continue to put lines on that are not destroying anything. Let's have it disappear behind there. So keep adding your objects. There, there. You can load your painting knife. Make sure it's clean. Make sure your painting knife's clean. There's light. This will have to go on this side of the picture because the light's on that side. I'll show you why in a minute. And some dark. I've loaded it distinctly so the light is on the inside of the picture. You see the light on the inside of the knife? It's good practice. So let's do that. Just squash it on. Now 
we better do a bit on this side. Nice loaded the other way this time. Oh, watch that I don't have them parallel. Oh, I don't want that in here. Let's clean my knife there. I don't like it going through the top of the board. There. There. Dark again. I need to break this. And that. And that. Something here not happening. There. Let's just put across there. I've loaded the brush again. Light and dark. I'll unload it there, clean it there. Now I'm using all the paints up that's left on my palette. Fit there, fit there. Oh, neglected that side a bit though. I don't want that there, that's too close to the edge. We'll take that off in a moment. There, and that's stroking off. So we'd better come in again and there. Now I know it's not easy to do, but if you can leave your painting at this stage and then do another one, and another one, and another one. And if you're not happy with them, Paint them over white and do some more. But the idea is to loosen up and work from light to dark. Everything facing into the picture. But then of course, if you can't stand having it like that, let's put some branches in. And just keep painting and painting. It's fun. And down the bottom here, I still had a little bit of Australian sienna and Let's do it the white. Let's have a crisscross and see what it looks like. That brings it toward you a little bit, a little bit like a footpath. A bit more. Yeah. Well, I know what I can do with my leftover paint. Hmm. I like that. Have fun. Relax, enjoy, and paint, and loosen up.